Palestra Training, Windows Server 2008 Network Infrastructure Configuration 7642, Configuring DNS, Part 1. This is the first lesson of actually four lessons as we look at the domain name resolution process in Windows Server 2008. Let's take a look at what we're going to cover in this lesson. In this lesson on Configuring DNS Part 1, we're going to look at five key areas. First of all, we'll review DNS, the domain name system, in a nutshell. We'll look at the process for installing DNS, then look at some configuration basics in Server Manager. We'll also talk about configuring DNS on the server core, and then we'll define things like conditional forwarders and root. Enterprise is that you'll be repeatedly prompted with this initial configuration tasks window to say, you know, you need to provide computer information, you might want to update this server, download and install updates, or customize this server by adding roles, features, enable things like remote desktop so they can be managed remotely from other systems, and configure Windows Firewall, which is already on. You can see under the Add Roles area, we can add roles like Active Directory Domain Services, DHCP Server, which we've already done, and DNS Server, which is what we're going to look at here coming up. If I don't want to see this every time, I can say, you know what, do not show this window at Logon and just close out of it. Now one thing I'll say in advance is this, the Windows 2008 server, you should go ahead and configure that server with a static IP version 4 address to make sure that clients can access them. You should avoid having your DNS server, if it's a separate server for example, getting its IP address and configuration information dynamically through DHCP. This is one of those servers you want to be statically configured with IP. Now to begin installing DNS, we're just going to go and we're going to use our famous tool, the Server Manager, under Administrative Tools, and of course Server Manager. Now as you can see here, I've already installed the DNS service on the system, and I kind of had to do that just to be able to be functional to do this particular uh, training, but I've already got the Active Directory Domain Name Services and the DNS server. We installed the DHCP server earlier and it's very similar. You just simply click on Add the Role and you choose DNS Server. Now in choosing DNS Server, the main thing I had to do is I had to say what namespace is this DNS server going to be authoritative for? And we can just expand out the roles here and expand out DNS Server all the way down there's my server name forward lookup zones and you can see I've got this hq.palestra.lab this one right here is generated internally by Windows Server 2008 MSDCS we'll talk about that one later on this server is going to be authoritative for the hq.palestra.lab now looking at this you can tell this is probably an internal namespace right because I'm using this .lab as my top-level domain. My domain name is Palestra. My subdomain is HQ. So it's subdomain HQ on domain name Palestra on top-level domain lab. So this is an internal namespace. I could not use this out on the Internet because, well, .lab is not a top-level domain on the Internet DNS namespace anyway. And I can't also use palestra.com because I don't own that domain name palestra.com. But I can use this internally. And you can see here, this is the elements that make up the domain namespace database for this namespace hq.palestra.lab. And by the way, once you go through the wizard to configure your DNS server, it's going to ask you to create your forward and reverse lookup zone. So again, here's my, and you're just going to type in the, the, the namespace. Again, if it's external, it has to be valid and registered. The reverse lookup zone, uh, which I didn't create, uh, can also be created 
through this wizard as well. I didn't do that, so let's go ahead and create the new reverse lookup zone right now so you can see the new zone wizard. And we'll talk more later about primary zones, secondary zones, and stub zones. But a primary zone is what this is, so we'll just click on Next. Then we're going to choose how we want this zone data replicated to all the DNS servers in this forest or all the DNS servers in this domain or to all the domain controllers in this domain. That's really there for backward compatibility. I'll stick with the default to all DNS servers in this domain and click Next. It's asking me, do I want to choose a reverse lookup zone for IP version 4 addresses or IP version 6 addresses? I want to create an IPv4 reverse lookup zone. And again, when we talk about reverse lookups, it's the opposite of a forward lookup. For example, you give somebody a domain name and they're going to go resolve the IP address for you. For example, I want to get to the web servers at www.google.com or www.palestratraining.com. I have that domain name, but I don't have the underlying IP address. A reverse lookup is the opposite. And typically this is used by applications that have the IP address, but do not have the domain name. So it's kind of reverse process. Here you put in the actual network ID or the name of the zone or the reverse lookup zone name. And they give you the example, if you use the network ID of 10, it would create a zone called 10.n-addr-arpa. I'm not going to be using this DNS out on the internet, so I'm going to cancel out of here. I don't need a reverse lookup. If I was out on the internet though, most likely I'd be using the reverse lookup zone. I just wanted to give you an idea what the wizard looked like. The next thing you want to do after you install and do basic configuration of your DNS server in the forward lookup zone is to set it up so that it points to itself for DNS resolution. You can see here I'm on the IP version 4 properties of the network interface, local area connection properties. I will go to this area down here and where it says use the following DNS server address. I will put in my DNS server address 192.168. Dot one dot one hundred. Click on OK. Now the DNS server zone database has a set of resource records or RRs that define information about individual objects. Let's go back to our drawing board and take a look at some of the most common resource records. One of the key things about Windows Server 2008 is how do we handle this as a database and for almost all of us it's going to be integrated into Active Directory. Now that being said, there are several types of records that represent different type of resources in our Active Directory domain. So first we have the A record or the host record. It's the most common one, okay? The most frequently used record. This will have just a host name and an IP address. All those laptops out there, all those workstations out there, all those departmental servers and network printers and other networks devices. Of course, you can also name your routers and your multi-layer switches and management IP addresses on different devices. So all those different hosts that make up our network. Then we have what's called quad A, okay, four A's. This is the IP version 6 host record. Obviously that makes sense. It's just host for IP version 6. Realize also part of the dynamic nature of Active Directory is that we can use other services like DHCP as individual hosts come onto our network. They can dynamically propagate this database with their host to IP address mapping once they're assigned it using DHCP. So there's not a whole lot of actual manual configuration in an integrated Windows 2008 environment. We also have NS servers, and this NS record for name server was actually created when I went through and created my hq.palestra.lab DNS server. NS records are used to identify the name servers within a DNS database. NS records indicate that a computer is able to run DNS queries for a particular zone. We've also got the MX record or mail exchanger. This indicates that the resources that are available via DNS for SMTP. If MX records are used on a domain basis, they can enable mail forwarding to specific servers. 
The pointer record, if we would have gone and created the reverse lookup zone, we would have used this pointer record. It would have automatically created a PTR record for every host record. PTR records or pointers are used in reverse queries in DNS.